Shut Off Grid. I'm Shelly. I'm Scott. And we're here. That's right, we are. <laughs> Hopefully we stay that way for some time. Yeah, we're here. We're here to do a bug out bag. Yeah, I'm, I'm bagging. I don't know, we'll call it maybe a get home bag. A yeah, bug out bag, I don't know. know. You can call it what you want. Either. But we're doing we'll unbagging anyway. There seems to be a lot of... I don't know how I want to put this. I'm sure you folks watch the news. Things are going absolutely batshit crazy. I mean, that, that might make this video a little time sensitive, I guess, but... Something's always going batshit crazy somewhere. Between the virus and this uh, contested election thing, people are, if you forgive the uh, term, losing their shit. And... There seems to be a lot of interest in a lot of this survivalist type thing. I've been, kind of been doing this stuff for a long time, um, and I've survived so far, so I guess I'm, I'm good at it. <laughs> Something. But, um, good at dodging. Anyway, this is my, I guess, common sense approach toward a get-home bag. The, the things that I keep in a bag in my vehicle and even here at home. So if something happens and I've got to pick up and move in a hurry and go someplace and stay for a day or so, or, you know, you're far enough away from home so that you got a good long walk ahead of here and you, you don't just want to throw a coat on and start trudging. Uh, this is the stuff that I find it logical to carry. So anyway. Let's get this unbagging going. Without uh, further ado. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Debagging. I don't know. What do you call it? <laughs> Unpacking the bag. This bag, uh, there's really nothing special about it. it uh, I believe I got it at a surplus store called the Army Barracks. They're a chain store. I don't know I don't know how far they go. I mean, I know there are several stores up here in New England. And they have a lot of you know, halfway decent stuff that you can get. Um, if they have a website, I'll put a link in the description. I'm not sure. Obviously, this particular bag is fairly military looking. It's, you know, olive drab. It came without all these different pouches and stuff on it. That's stuff that I've, that I've added on. Uh, one of the reasons I chose this bag is, is it's not too big. It's not even really as big as a typical Appalachian Trail Hikers day pack. And really, it doesn't need to be any bigger. In my experience, the bigger the pack you have, the more extra junk that you don't need you're going to put in it. And then it's going to be a bag that you can't carry. So basically, you have like a duffel bag with straps. So if you need something in here, you're going to have to dig. So anything you think you might have to get out in a hurry, it's nice to be able to have it on the outside of the bag. Just my opinion. This other little pouch over here is kind of cool. I'll open that one so we can see what's in it. Ah. Holds an algae bottle. In the bottom here, I keep. Uh, oh, that's actually a little glow in the dark. A little glow in the dark light. So if you hold it under the light for a few seconds, it uh, it glows in the dark. You know, so you can hang it up. So people will see you. There's, uh, well, I guess three or four bags of that. Uh, the tea bag, tea bag coffee. coffee. Yeah. Because who doesn't want like coffee? You won't find a coffee cup in here, but I've always got one either in my truck or at work, so it's no extra hassle just to toss one in the extra room that's in the bag. If you're walking, you're not going to leave your coffee cup behind, right? This side pouch over here has got, uh, believe it or not, a small sewing kit. Seems silly, but I can't tell you the number of times I've uh, ripped out a pair of pants or something and done an impromptu quick couple of stitches to be able to get through the work day. Uh, some bug spray. A lot of people, well actually it's not spray, it's uh, it's just uh, regular liquid. But I don't bother to take that out during the winter time. It stays in here year-round. So uh, that stuff goes in the little the little package here. Actually, I'll leave all this stuff out, spread out, so you guys can see what's in it. So that is empty. In the Nalgene bottle, you guys have seen this before. We uh, we used it in that cooking video. We showed yeah. you how to how to prep the uh, freeze dried food. Yeah, freeze dried chicken, seven years old. I keep a That's bottle good. of acetaminophen, some uh, utensils. Now these utensils, these are actually made out of Lexan plastic. You can get them at any hikers or outdoor store. 
they're extremely light. They're unbelievably light. They're lighter than regular plastic silverware, and they're unbreakable, in theory. I know some people can break anything, but, you know. I tried to put everything in here light, and I tried to get away from military gear because although it's well built, it's very heavy, and heavy is bad when it comes time to carry a pack. There's, uh, I think there's 100 feet of paracord there. There's all kinds of different uses for it. Um, you can actually, if you cut, these are all melted ends right now because I didn't want it to fray, but there are actually uh, strands of cord within the paracord that are fine enough so you can pull a section of it out and use it for fish line. Actually, <laughs> to be honest, I've used paracord more to replace boot laces that have broken yeah. at work than anything else, but you can use it for so many things. And it costs very little. You rigged a chair with it camping. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, rigged something with it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always rigging something. Rigging something up. So, the clayer, uh This uh, little LL Bean thermometer you can hang up someplace and say how cold it is out. Uh, a whistle, always good if you're doing anything with search and rescue or if you're lost. It's good to have around. Small pair of fingernail clippers, great okay, for pulling out slivers, trimming nails, whatever, cutting fish line, easier than getting out the knife. In a uh, military, I believe that's a P-51, actually a little bigger than a P-38 can opener. Can be had at any surplus store. This is a blast match, spring-loaded, and believe it or not, the flint and the steel are all in the same piece. So when you hold down on the little button, and you push. I don't want to get that in my whiskey. There you go. They always work. You know, uh, people make fun of fire starters, but it's a lot easier to use a lighter. But drop a lighter in a brook and see how long it takes you to uh, get it working again. This comes out ringing wet. Always works. Now my Nalgene bottle, if you look, it's got... Uh, that's actually military duct tape. They used to call it 100 mile an hour tape. I wrapped that around here. I got this idea from a guy named Cody Lundeen. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, he used to be on the show Dual Survival. He's written a couple of really, really good books. Uh, 98 Degrees, 98.6 I think was the name of it, which of course is Body Temperature. The Art of Keeping Your Ass Alive is a very good book. And also uh, Surviving When All Hell Breaks Loose is another very good book. You have to get past Cody's kind of eclectic sense of humor, but um, very, very good information. And I, I lightened up my gear a lot after reading those books. This tape is on here right at the 16 ounce line. The reason I did that is because most of the backpacker meals that you use require 16 ounces of water. So I know that if I fill it up to that tape, that's the amount of water that I need, or below that, if it's a single serving meal, to uh, to make the meal. So I'm not obstructing those those measurements on the bottle, and it gives me I don't know this probably 30 or 40 feet of good military grade tape there, and it, it stays good. You can pull a piece off and use it. You can if you need to lower it down, you know, um, into a brook or into a hole to get water. You can actually pull some of that back put a piece of rope or paracord through there with a knot on it, pulled it back down. You can lower that into the hole, pull it out, and you've got a full cup full of water. So now we'll get on to the rest of the rest of the bag. Uh, well, we can start with this little compartment down here first. A uh, spare set, set of uh, glasses for those of us uh, people that need them or at least need them to read. Four pack of uh, AA batteries. So many things are battery operated. Speaking of that, this mag light I've had for probably 30 years. Again, duct tape wrapped around the handle because of the duct tape factor. You need it. Uh, a lot of people don't realize these lights actually make a pretty good lantern. If you unscrew the lens off all the way, that light will be on if there's batteries in there and you can use the base. Uh, the uh, lens is a stand, and that light actually lights up quite a good amount of area. I mean, you're not going to read a book, but 
if a couple people are standing around having a conversation in the dark, it actually works pretty good. Uh, another fire starting setup. This is a piece of hacksaw blade. This is a regular uh, mag block. I think it's a I think it's a Coleman maybe or Coglins, just a cheap one. You can carve your magnesium off with a knife into a pile and use this piece of hacksaw blade as a striker. And that is another way you have fire. I like these little chains. You can use them like a lanyard, you know. That's why if you notice I have I have stuff hooked together like that over here too. It keeps you know a few of the little a little things hooked together so you can find them. Uh, candle. This one's a little dilapidated, but it's just a regular wax candle. And the reason I keep that in here is for fire starting purposes. If you light a candle, people don't think about it, but that's a source of heat and fire starting for quite some time. Plus, it's got hot wax. You can seal uh, places where threads have torn and stuff in uh, clothing or in boots if you have to. There's just a lot of different, a lot of different uses for wax. So. It's just a good size, like a five-hour candle wrapped up in a plastic bag. It's been melted many times, but you know what? If I light it, it'll still work. This is a Kershaw multi-tool. It's a really, really nice multi-tool. I'm not sure they make this particular one anymore. I don't carry it on a daily basis because it's big. One of the reasons it's big is because it actually has a pair of vice grips built into it, so it doesn't fold. It's got all your typical stuff that all your normal... You know, multi-tools would have screwdrivers, files, scissors, regular knife blade, you know, everything everything you'd normally have. But it's nice because it actually it is a pair of ice grips. This is a lumber crayon. Um, any kind of a marking crayon would work. I have this one actually wrapped up with electrical tape so that my fingers don't get blue from the color of the crayon. The reason this is in here, I figure if you want to leave a message for somebody that's following you, or an arrow on something to tell somebody where you went, or, you know, mom went to so-and-so's, I'll be there, whatever. You can take this and write in great big letters on something, where you're going. Somebody can come along and wipe it right off afterwards. It's not leaving a permanent mark like a Sharpie can. Um, anyway, it just seemed like a good idea at the time, so that, that's why that's in there. Okay, as you can see, we've got the ever-present backpacker meals. There's a uh, beef stew and lasagna with meat sauce. This is a first aid kit. Uh, there's pretty, I'm not going to get into the each individual component. There's, uh, there's gauze, there's probably some smelling salts. I know there's some um, antibiotic ointment, some aspirin. Uh, what are the strips of uh, uh, <laughs> take the place of getting stitches for the temporary, the, the, what do they call it? Steri strips, yes, a bunch of steri strips in there. There's no quick clot or anything in here. I'm not trained in how to use that really. It would be nice to have some, but I've got the the maxi pads and stuff like that in there, so that's that's kind of my kind of my uh, replacement for that. Maybe some quick clots in there. There's some burn gel in here. You know, any of the stuff you can think of, there's lots of good links. There's lots of good first aid kits available. I don't know, you can buy one or you can, you know, tailor make your own for your own situation. Uh, this is actually a gun cleaning kit, believe it or not. Uh, that one is set up for 223 and 308. I suppose you could use it to uh, clean some pistols and stuff too. I'm not going to bother to uh, to open that up, but that's, that's what that is. That is a gun cleaning kit. Now up here, this is my uh, cooking pot. That I use on top of my stove. The lid is made right onto it, as is the handle. It's from MSR, Mountain Safety Research. Inside, double ended salt and pepper shaker, salt on one side, pepper on the other. And believe it or not, in my cooking gear, roll of toilet paper in a plastic bag. It goes together. But it fits. <laughs> it fits. So right. that's where it lives. Might as well use it. So that is here. correct. Now, a lot of this mountain safety research research stuff is designed to use for hikers and backpackers. You're not going to, you know, cook a pot of stew on this. What it's made for is to boil water, so you can dump that water into one of those backpacker meals, and you're eating. 
That's or if you're sterilizing your water and you want to kill everything that's in it, that's that's what that's for. In the same trend, also MSR. I don't know if you watched our video about preparing the mountain house meal the other day, but this is another one of those stoves. This is a MSR pocket rocket. Basically the same thing as the one my wife had that was uh, Optimus, I think. The only difference being this one does not have the push button igniter. You have to light it with either a match or a lighter or uh, something like that. But for that sacrifice, you get a very small package, very light. With that in that pot, your Nalgene bottle, one of those meals, you literally are cooking with gas. Fuel bottle for the, uh, for the stove, tucked inside of a Thinsulate stocking hat or watch cap. These things are great. They're very warm. I leave it in there all year. I don't take it out in the summertime. This is a Mountain Safety Research, again, MSR, Mini Works, water filter. This particular one, get it out of the bag here. If you look with the instructions and all the stuff that goes with it, the uh, drinking adapter, this threads right onto the top of an algae bottle. It's actually designed to work with an algae bottle. So you're not screwing around trying to hold on to two hoses. You just literally throw the pickup hose, which has a, uh, let me get it out here. A little pre-filter and a weight on it. It goes in the brook or in the pond. You start pumping, and as it fills the bottle, it's filtering the water. These, these are stuff sacks. This is a. This one's made of cordra. Uh, inside, believe it or not, uh, there's a pair of uh, underwear, a couple pairs of socks, and also a United States military issue poncho liner. Uh, some people call them a wooby. So this is a wooby. This particular one is black and it's made to go on the inside of a US military poncho as a liner, but they're a really nice it's big too. nylon insulated blanket. I think they cover a full size bed. Yeah, I would say it's full size for sure. Uh, they're very warm. Very, at first, when you put one on, if it's cold, it doesn't feel like there's much heat in it. It doesn't take long. But it doesn't take long in the thermal heat from your body will warm that up like crazy. They have tie strings on them to tie them to the Both inside things. of a poncho. You know, that's basically what those are for. That's why in here there's actually another t-shirt, some more socks, a bandana. The heaviest thing in there is the United States military poncho. These are rubberized. They're quite heavy. This one's held in place right now with a couple of uh, tire wire ties or tie, tie uh, wraps, if you want to call them that. It's rolled up just to the right size to fit in the bottom of this pack. It's got grommets all around the bottom and across the neck hole up top in places where you can uh, tie them and actually snap, so you can snap several of them together. You can literally take some of that paracord and tie it between two or three trees, throw this over the top of it, tie off the head hole, and you're under a pretty nice tarp and windbreak. Wire ties, tie wraps, uh, good solid ones, nice and long. They can be used for a lot of things. Uh, you can secure gear with them. You can secure people with them. They've been used for improvised handcuffs for years. There are ways to defeat them and get out of them if a person really knows how to, to work the little tab back there. If they're very good, they can get out of it. Most people don't. There's videos on that, hint, hint, you can go watch it, but they're just too handy to have, not to have a few around, and again, they weigh nothing. So. That'll be our next video. Can Scott get out of these? <laughs> no, it won't, because I can't. <laughs> I carry a compass. This particular one is a Silver Ranger. Uh, my dad is a forester, and that's how I really learned how to use a compass, that and in the scouts. The mirror is also good for reflective. If you need That's to true. You could signal. signal you could signal somebody. somebody you know yeah. that along with the whistle. Some handy wipes, wet wipes, baby wipes, whatever you want to call them. This is a map of our state and the adjoining state to us. Um, you know, if you have one of these, you can keep it labeled. Uh, areas marked. 
you know, you could even, if you wanted to, if you go to the same place every day, you could have your, whatever your areas where you plan to meet your family or whatever mapped out if you can't go home. You know, there's all kinds of uses for maps. This day and age, everybody uses their phone right up until they don't work for you. That being said, if you know somebody that's an aviator, I'm talking a licensed pilot, you may be able to land your hands on an outdated aircraft sectional. And they have to pay a lot for these maps. I'm not about to, gonna bother to unfold it all the way. This particular one is the whole Northeast. One reason I like these, although it doesn't have a lot of your routes and stuff numbered, it has your towns on there and it also lists your infrastructures. So like if there's a big parking lot in an area, it'll be on this map. If there's a sawmill or a shopping center in an area, it'll be on this map. Whether the place is open or not, those are still valid waypoints if you're trying to navigate through an area. So it lets you know exactly where you are. One other thing that's on here, because pilots use them to navigate, railroad lines. So it'll show you where the railroad lines are. So these things are a wealth of information. I don't know if they're regulated. If you are not supposed to have them, I've never heard anybody say you aren't, but I know that pilots have to pay a lot of money for these and they're updated fairly frequently. That's the hot tip of the day. If you can find one for your area, even if it's 10 years old, chances are things haven't changed much. If they're not illegal, if they are, then you <laughs> yeah, have I not can't. seen this. Yeah, yeah, I am. You can't blame me for that. Nobody has ever told me it was can't illegal, so uh, <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go it's with a that. Little flashy thing, <laughs> so they don't know. Uh, on this side, I do keep a fixed blade knife. This particular one is a uh, Ontario Knife Company. I think it's a Rat Five. It's just an old beater, but it's heavy. This is, I keep it very sharp. It's got uh, Makata handles. Obviously, it's serrated on the back side. One of the reasons I like it is because you can split wood with this. If you have another big piece of wood, you can take a piece of wood, put this on top of it, beat it down through the wood. You can do a lot with one of these. This scabbard actually has provisions for a sharpening stone, and I do keep a small sharpening stone inside this little pouch. So that is it. That is all that's in this guy's get home bag. I know a lot of other people carry a lot of other stuff. I'm not here to criticize anybody. Um, this is probably more than your average person really needs. I'm not going to say it isn't, but this is the woods of Maine and I am an outdoorsman. Uh, I don't advocate carrying anything in your pack that you don't already know how to use. You should realistically sit back and ask yourself What's more likely to happen that would cause, my, cause me to use my bag that's in my car? Uh, Jack Sperko of the Survival Podcast had a good saying, uh, the, most, the more dramatic a scenario is, the less likely it is to happen to you. Meaning, it's far less likely that we're gonna get an EMP and have to walk home than it is there's gonna be a train der derailment and you're not gonna be able to get home for two days or you're not going to be able to get home the way you want to or something like that. Uh, that's what this bag is actually geared towards. Thanks for watching guys. Yeah. Uh, if you like this yeah. video, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below or a question. We'll be glad to answer. Yeah, uh, suggestions about, uh, you know, or what other things you'd like to see. I mean, that's how this Absolutely. came about. Yeah. Or I some believe. suggestions on what to carry. Maybe you've got yeah. something we don't yeah. have here that you think that we really could use. We are Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. Have a good one.